How did I get into software architecture and design? And do I think of myself as a software architect? I was recently asked these questions and I thought it could be helpful to others to understand my career path and what I thought was helpful. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com and here's my journey into writing software and how the heck I ended up on YouTube. I'd like to thank EventStore for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. My career started in the late 90s. This is when I was actually paid to write software for the first time. But it really started before that when I was working in the mid-1990s, just doing my own thing, writing static HTML websites and posting them to things like GeoCities and AngelFire, kind of in that back in that era. But when I was first paid to actually do anything, that's when I started diving into programming a little bit more. And I was using things like Perl, PHP, and Delphi. In those early years set a foundation that I think has lasted the entire part of my career, which is understanding foundationally from an operational perspective, how software runs. So that means that not just being oblivious, I was forced into setting up Linux, understanding and configuring Apache, Nginx, MySQL, Postgres, load balancing, etc. understanding networking, all these foundational things about not just writing software, but actually deploying it and understanding physically how it ran. When you fast forward to current day with cloud, managed infrastructure, managed services, you do have a better appreciation for what these services provide to you because they're abstracted over top of what you were doing manually. When I think of something like database replication and how it's managed in the cloud for me with automatic failover, yes, I was doing this manually before. So I have kind of a little bit of a deeper appreciation and understanding how it works in the cloud. So working in startups and small companies, I was just forced into understanding infrastructure and working with it. And I'm really happy I was forced down that path. Another important aspect of my career is I've always been working on line of business style applications. I've never been really working in things like gaming, for example. So that means that I've been doing things like manufacturing, accounting, uh, more e-commerce, distribution, transportation. These are all the various domains that I've been in. And while they all are very unique, there is some overlap between them. And because of that, that's when I stumbled upon domain-driven design in the mid to late 2000s. And this really changed a lot of my trajectory and how I think about writing software. And then domain-driven design expanded into other ideas, things like CQRS, event sourcing, which then ultimately led me to messaging and event-driven architecture. And people like Udi Dahan and Greg Young and the things that they were producing via conference talks or blogs, those really had an influence and guided me in a particular way that I think of today. So in that time, there was another impactful moment that happened in my career. So at that time, I was looking at domain driven design, exploring it, CQRS, event sourcing, et cetera. I was working for a professional services company, kind of doing two things, operationally looking at different infrastructure because I had that experience as well as writing software. But the big change was understanding money. Now that may seem odd, but I'd ask you the question, when you get paid, do you think about, oh, this is how I actually get paid. This is how the company actually makes money. And here are the associated costs. That change, because I was right in the middle of it, I could understand more about revenue, about the bottom line, about the costs associated and how I was actually paid. So as the example, when you're working for a small company, let's say you're even doing your own independent contract work, you're, for example, working on a project, you're the one doing the actual quoting, the delivering and actually implementing the software. You understand how much uh, your cost is in terms of time. You know what the bottom line is. When you all of, a start, all of a sudden start seeing, well, this is how money is actually made, it gives you just a very different perspective about how you spend your time um, and the decisions that you make around writing software and the architecture. Now I have a video that I'll link at the very end of this video where I really do think kind of understanding this, understanding money, understand how your businesses work really is an underrated skill. But what I want to touch on specifically here is bike shedding. If you understand time and money, you all of a sudden won't be bike shedding. It won't turn into days of just deliberating over nonsense. You make a decision, you start moving forward, especially if you're in working in a small company or a startup especially a startup where you need to make decisions. 
So I really do think understanding money, understanding where revenue comes from, how expenses and costs side of things work, really does make you better informed of making decisions, especially in your software architecture and your design. Just like I was forced to understand infrastructure, I was also forced to understand software architecture and design. That means when you're working for a startup or a small company, working on a greenfield project, you're making the decisions, maybe if you don't even have enough experience early on to be making those decisions. And in a lot of these greenfield projects, I was around long enough for years and years at some of these places where I actually did get to see them in production over the course of years and really did get to feel the pain of some of the bad decisions I made around the design, around the architecture. I've also been in a really difficult position many different times where I was thrown into the fire of an existing application, a large system in production with no support. There's no other developers, there's no documentation. Here's this large system, you figure it out. That's happened to me more than once and I really do, at the time it was stressful, but I really do think it helped overall how I look at code bases, how I navigate them, how I try to understand and debug systems with zero familiarity. So do I think of myself as a software architect? No, not really, I never have. It's always been a part of every role that I've been in. And I really do acknowledge that that is a role that you can have. However, in my circumstances, in my context, it's always been a part of what I've been doing. Whether that be making decisions on my own, a part of a team, I really like to include everybody, especially now, about making these decisions or understanding why we're making particular decisions about our design, about our architecture. So I really don't think of myself as an architect. It's always been a part of everything I've always been doing. So how did all this lead me to posting videos on YouTube about software architecture and design? It's because really that's all I've been doing. That's all I know. I've been writing large line of business systems, having to think about the architecture, having to think about the design, decomposing systems. This is what I've been in. This is what my experience is. It really starts more than 10 years ago where I started CodeOpinion.com and I was blogging about some of these ideas that I had. It really wasn't probably as focused as it is now, but that's really where this started stemming from and how I created a YouTube channel. The reason I created a YouTube channel was actually very specific and it's still the same reason that I do it today and why I post videos. I felt there was lacking content around the topics that I post around software architecture and design. That's where what's interests me and that's where my knowledge and experience is in and that's why I post around that. I will not post content that's not in that wheelhouse, nor will I be posting content if I really have shallow knowledge about it. So you will not see me posting about some topic where I just don't feel like I have deep knowledge in it. I'm not interested in posting that and really giving out information that I feel may not be accurate. Does that mean that everything I post is correct? No, absolutely not. It's just based on my experience and what, I, what my opinion is, hence code opinion. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more insight about why I post what I post on my blog and on YouTube around these topics of software architecture and design. I really do appreciate all the members I have here on YouTube and Patreon. They get access to a private Discord server where I have many different members now where you can ask questions, chat, answer questions, and post your own opinions. If you wanna join, check the link in the description. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.